Best practices help you maintain your private well and water system and keep them functioning in a way that will keep you safe. One best practice that applies to all of the others on our list is maintaining good records on your system. This is similar to the file you would keep for repairs and maintenance on your car or home. It should include the well log, dates of any work or service on the system, billing records and receipts, equipment warranties, sampling results, the well driller contract, and dates and information from inspection and maintenance. You might think this is overkill, especially if you have had your well a long time, but it not only prevents or identifies problems proactively, it helps you become more familiar with your system, how it works, and what can go wrong. With that in mind, here are nine ways to keep your well and water system in good repair and running smoothly. The first best practice is to use a licensed driller, pump installer, or contractor when constructing, servicing, or repairing a well. If your state or territory doesn't license well drillers, Pennsylvania and Alaska do not, then try to use a driller that is certified by the National Groundwater Association. NGWA's testing and accreditation means that a contractor meets a set of standards of practice that indicate they have the professional ability to properly do the job at hand. The second best practice is to periodically inspect your well. You should check your well cap to ensure it is sealed and structurally sound with no cracks, breaks, or missing bolts, and that the vent tube has a screen. Ensure the annular seal is solid and not sunken around the well. The well should stick up at least 8 to 12 inches, higher is better, and the soil should be mounted near the well so water will run away from the wellhead. The third best practice is to keep the area around your well free from debris. Your well should always be accessible. The fourth best practice is to prevent backflow. This can be done by using backflow preventers on all hoses and spigots. Never put a hose into a tank for mixing and install vacuum breakers on all threaded spigots and faucets that might have a hose hooked to them. The fifth best practice is maintaining your treatment equipment. If you have treatment devices, Set up a schedule for maintenance and for replacing or cleaning filters as well as adding chemicals so they operate properly. The sixth best practice is maintaining your septic system. Properly maintaining your septic system is a best practice that can influence your well significantly. If not pumped on a regular schedule, solids getting in the drain field can plug the laterals and soon your septic system will stop functioning. We could devote an entire lesson to septic tank issues, but because that is not the focus of this class, we are providing some useful reference material for you to follow instead. Most states license septic installers and pumpers, so use someone who is licensed. The thing to remember is that your septic will fail. They have a finite life because eventually the soil around lateral lines in your drain field will become clogged with organic material. Proper maintenance will extend its life significantly. The Montana State Cooperative Extension reference for this lesson does a really good job of explaining the basics of septic systems. The Illinois Cooperative Extension has a good maintenance record that goes along with their septic information. Like your well system, you should keep good records of maintenance and repairs of your septic system. The seventh best practice is to use chlorine responsibly. Regular shock chlorination may be a good practice for a very limited set of wells around the country, but in general you should only disinfect when necessary. If you have continual bacteria issues, an inline chlorinator is a better solution. Chlorine is an oxidant and when used in higher concentrations it can help release metals from groundwater formations. It can also be hard on equipment in your well and can lead to earlier repair or replacement. The eighth best practice is to include an access port for water level measurement. The state of Oregon requires new wells to have an access port for taking water level measurements. Though some might disagree on the need for such a port, here at the private well class we consider this to be a good management practice in many situations. By having a dedicated port on the well cap, you eliminate the need to remove the entire cap and you eliminate the opportunity for your measuring device to get caught in the wiring or pump intake. From our perspective, anything that will minimize the risk of damaging the well, pump, and wiring, as well as minimize the risk of contaminating the well, we would consider a good practice. It's both convenient and maintains the integrity of the well. 
The ninth and final best practice is to sample your well annually. Annual samples are typically for coliform bacteria and nitrate, which can both indicate your well has been contaminated from the outside. Your local Department of Health should know of any contaminants that are common in your area that you should be testing for. You can also ask neighbors, county extension, or local contractors about possible naturally occurring contaminants in your area. You should also sample your well when one of the following occur. Anytime the well is repaired or serviced. If you notice any change in taste, color, or odor. After chlorination. This is because chlorine kills bacteria, but is also an oxidant and can release metals into your well water. If someone at the home is experiencing a recurring illness, if a new infant is brought into the home or someone is pregnant, or if a neighbor has a water quality issue with their well. In these cases, your local health department should be able to help you figure out what you need to be testing for. The Private Well class is a collaboration between the Rural Community Assistance Partnership and the University of Illinois through the Illinois State Water Survey and the Illinois Water Resource Center, and funded by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. The views expressed here are solely from the class authors, and not endorsed or reviewed by US EPA. For more information on Private Wells, sign up for our free 10-week email course at www dot privatewellclass dot org